Hi there. Hello. <laughs> Great to see you. And you. It's, it's been a while. How would you say you are? How do I put this? I'm handling it the way anybody handles sudden change, which we are trained to be prepared for, if you will. I, have, I keep everything in perspective. I mean, for me, I had 35 memorable years, and I loved it, loved it all. And there are new things to love now, so I, I'll be fine, I, I am fine. If I think back to the chaos of that moment, Wendy's going gray, and then Dove going gray, and then this narrative getting locked into social media. Lisa LaFlam was terminated because she let her hair go gray. Were you terminated because you let your hair go gray? I, as, as everybody knows, as I said in my original and only tweet on the subject, it was a business decision, and that's what I know. So I can't really comment beyond that because it's all I know. But I know you to be a storyteller and I see restraint in you that I don't necessarily <laughs> understand. So is it that you, you don't want to talk about what happened or is there something else going on? It's two things. I really want to focus on the future. I really am motivated to see what is out there for me. The other is, you know, the agreement. You are, how do I put this? Legally, there's only so much I can say, obviously. I have already said a great deal in the tweet, and um, that just stands. If I go back to that, that tweet you issued, you talked about feeling blindsided. Was there absolutely no hint that this was coming? Everything in that tweet stands to this day. Blindsided. I think you live this same reality. In daily news, I would wake up every single day and have no idea what would happen between the moment I woke up and when I ended up back in my home uh, after midnight. The same was true that day. You adapt to whatever it is, and that is what we are trained to do, is, is react to sudden change. and. Uh, when I put it in perspective, and I do all the time, I think about you know the soldiers who we saw lose their legs in Afghanistan, or you know babies born in in tarpaulins after the earthquake in Haiti. All of these things, those are sudden changes. They don't come back from. We do. The comeback is better than the setback. It takes a while to get there, though. Yeah. So how, how, did you, how did you sort of navigate, you know, going at like a hundred clicks an hour and then not? You, wow, you're, um, you, it's not easy to find the new path but you're equipped with the skills of a journalist, which is to pivot. That's what we know how to do. We pivot. We pivot in our professional lives. We pivot in our personal lives. So something interesting happened not that long ago. There are these industry awards. Networks nominate people for various awards. And the story that was out there is that CTV wouldn't nominate you, so you nominated yourself. Well, the, you know, the truth is I did not nominate myself, but when I learned that I, my work was not going to be submitted, I thought, no, it doesn't work that way. You can take someone's job, but you can't actually erase their history and their body of work. And in this case, these are the most important stories we covered in a year. Um, the war in Ukraine, the Pope's uh, visit to this country, the Pope, the, the elders' visit to Rome. I submitted my work right. for the scrutiny of the judges. Who then nominated you. Well, who then nominated me, which was a great honor. It was important to me for the sake of these stories that they not be erased. And in a moment when you are restrained from, from talking, that's something you could do. Well, it's my work, you know. I'm, I'm actually proud of my work as a journalist. And that moment 
called for action on my part, and I took it and submitted my own work. And when you talk about those stories, and I think about the timeline of it, particularly the, the Pope coming to, to mm -hmm. Canada, that was your last assignment. It was. How, how did you compartmentalize that? <laughs> that was an emotional experience by virtue of the story itself, compounded what, by what I knew. You weren't able to share with your team that you knew? No. So that's lonely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the focus about aging women in this industry was all put on you. You, you became a representative of what was wrong in the sense of how women were being treated. And I don't know what that would be like. I would say that uh, given the fact that it has been an issue I've talked about for so long, people now want to hear from me. I'm happy to speak for women always, and it is not just in in um, the media sector, it's in every sector there is discrimination against women. In, in the first few months, um, how did people approach you? With support, absolute support. And, um, you know, as a, as a journalist, um, both a reporter and an anchor, I always felt a responsibility to the viewer, always. I wasn't so, I didn't know it was reciprocal. I, you don't know until now I know that there is a relationship and it's sometimes indefinable what happens when someone welcomes you into your home every single night to tell you the worst possible things that could happen in the day and hopefully some of the best possible things. That is an intimate relationship and, um, and I think it's been extraordinary to see people openly show their support that way. Did you realize you needed to hear that? You know, I think we also, because it's such a polarized world, I think we become, journalists, especially women, become pin cushions for um, the, the haters, if you will. And so maybe we train ourselves to hear the negative, maybe we absorb the negative more than we should. This was a time and has been a time where um, letting in some love, and it, and it has been love and kindness, has been a comfort and has really, you know, helped me now find, as I say, this path. That new path she talks about has many side roads, but reporting on human rights remains at the core. That's why not long ago she traveled to Kenya and Tunisia for the group Journalists for Human Rights, a Canadian nonprofit organization that helps prop up civil society, trains journalists around the world on how to tackle human rights and governance issues. So you're trying to change a patriarchal society. For her, the needs of women are at the heart of it all. One of the pieces you did, uh, in Kenya, I, I found kind of startling. And I'm a bit mad at myself that I found it startling because I should have known this was happening. But uh, women in, in newsrooms there are leaving in droves in part because there's the scene where a woman talks about wanting to get her story approved by her producer. And the answer is yes, if you come to the hotel and have sex with me. That moment when it happened to me, um, the feeling aside from um, fear, disgust, and confusion, was anger. I was shocked as well at how present it is on every level in Kenya. I spoke to so many women who all have experienced uh, extreme and um, maybe mild, although is there really any such thing as mild harassment? It all impacts you emotionally and professionally. It, you do not, that is not democracy. That is not an equal society. And I, I was just heartbroken for a lot of women also that they felt the need to just quit. And sadly, several have taken their own lives. Um, it, it is a really a crisis, I would say. These are slow stories of struggle and change. Change is slow. But how worried are you about women in the industry here? In the industry and in the workforce, women are outnumbered, outranked, outearned, 
it's all the stats point to the same thing. Uh, I think we're le around less than half the, the actual workforce. I've had amazing opportunities working with such strong women. Um, I watched that change in newsrooms where there's more women. The question is, what are their roles? And that is where we need to look, is um, on a corporate level, we're still underrepresented. And, and that is an issue, the people who are actually making decisions. Um, is that a balanced team around the table? But in newsrooms, I feel we see a beautiful rise of women and, and BIPOC women, which is critically important. Those are the women, I feel, who are now getting the worst of it on social media. And we can throw our support around them because we kind of faced that through the years. When you talk about the beauty of a newsroom, you, you physically change, right? <laughs> you, you sit up, you, you physically change. Are you saying I'm slouching? No, <laughs> no, I'm saying I think you miss it. Oh, I miss it. I mean, the thing is, 35 years with, with one team, but changing jobs over those years, these are family members for me, and they always will be. That doesn't change. Is there a moment that changed something for you? Did somebody say something? Did you go for a great walk? Was there a moment where grief changed? Because it is grief. We are talking about a type of grief. I think it's cumulative, and it is over time. And do you watch the news at night? I watch you every single night. That was the right answer. But it's also <laughs> true. I mean, I can't, you can't not. Like, that doesn't leave you. I am just genuinely interested in what is happening around the world and in my own country. Um, and I, I'll, I don't suppose that'll ever change. Thank you. It's good to see you. Great to see you, Adrian. Thank you.